Welcome back to the Super Bolt Build Series. My name is Adam with Swell Wake Surf, and today we're going to talk about installing the ballast system in this boat. We've removed everything factory. Originally factory, it had one three-quarter inch through hull hooked up to a um, bilge style pump through sprinkler valves that would fill the 750 pounds of ballast through one pump and one through hull. When we're talking about wake surf ballast, we're talking about over 2,000 pounds of ballast in this boat. Um, and if we were to do that on that one pump, it would take 45 minutes to fill the system. And it's just not feasible. The system was outdated. It was barely worked. Um, so we're just going to install a new system in this boat to make sure that it operates perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to install two rear fat sacks or two fat sacks in each rear locker. Those are custom designed to fit this locker of this 21 V perfectly. And we also have a ski locker bag that is massive. The ski locker is massive in this because it has like a raised walkthrough kind of padded area. So there is a ton of room there. And then we also have a bow bag. So that's what these four fat sacks are behind me. These are the bags that are going to go in the boat. And we'll talk a little bit more about the size and placement and all that stuff uh, further down in the video. The other things that are key to this install, first of all, we need to get the water in the boat. And that's what we're going to use three new through holes for. These are one inch through holes. We're going to cap off the existing through hole. They're really, really hard to get out. And there's no real reason to take it out. We're just going to put a cap on the top of it and we're going to install three, th three new ones. We make sure we have a shutoff valve in case there's an emergency, a bag pops or hose comes loose or something, you can shut it off so you don't sink. Um, and then from that, we're going to take and we're going to run this one inch clear suction hose. We like to use clear so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, this stuff's very flexible, easy to install, easy to run throughout the boat. And it's one inch or one inch and an eighth size. Either one of those sizes is going to work. Um, but we usually, usually use the inch and an eighth size. Once we run from the through hole with the hose, we're going to run it to a reversible pump. This is a Johnson Tallulah pump. These are our favorite pumps. They're a little bit faster than the Ballast Kings, for sure faster than the Ballast Puppies. But they don't require alternator work or, you know, increase of wire size or anything like that. So these pumps, if you have existing pumps, can be swapped out on the existing wiring. These are 13.5 gallons per minute. So they're very fast and they'll work great for this application. And we're gonna put three of these in. So what we try to do is we try to put enough pumps in to kind of balance the installation time so that you're installing, you know, you're feeling, the rear bags are usually the biggest. They're around 800 pounds. Um, so if this one pump is filling 800 pounds and the other pump, we'll have another pump for the other, for the port and star rear locker. And then we'll have one for the two front bags, um, that will kind of balance out the, the filling and make sure that it fills in a good amount of time and everything's kind of full at the same time. So we'll be installing three of these. We'll talk about placement, where to place them, all that later in this video. <clears throat> these pumps have the Deutsch connector quick connects. So if you pick up the fat sack wire harness here, it's going to just click right into it. This comes with a switch as well. So it has a two position fill and empty switch for the reversible pumps and connections right to a battery. So this is a super easy way to do it. All quick connects. Um, you don't even have to cut, cut or strip wire whatsoever. These are super handy. We're going to install the through holes with 4200 fast here. This stuff is great. It's, an, it's a removable, so you can remove it if you ever need to, sealant. Um, it cures in 24 hours. We recommend the fast cure. If you don't get the 4200 fast cure, if you get the regular 4200, it can take seven days. So just keep that in mind. If you're doing it this project over the winter like we are, it's not going to matter a whole lot outside of slowing down your progress maybe. Um, but if you're doing it in the summer, it can definitely put a damper on your summer. <clears throat> the way that we attach the hose to the bags is with the fat sack suction stop. So this screws into the bag and it has these holes in this fitting so that if the bag sucks flat, it can't, it'll still suck air and pull the water out. And then we have these flow rate quick connects that click on here and lock. And so what this does is it makes it easy in the winter, or the off season to pull your bags out, drain them, put them in storage. And it allows you to just connect them and pull them apart if you ever need to as well. We do not like to glue these in. Uh, we've never had a problem with them leaking. So we just screw them in as tight as we can get them by hand. 
and then we leave them. You can glue these in as well. A lot of the bags that are OEM fitment will be glued in from the factory. It doesn't matter a whole lot, it's just our preference. And then of course, we're gonna tie everything down with hose clamps, heat gun. You're never gonna get these fittings on these hoses or the pump for that matter without a heat gun. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have a heat gun. And then you tighten them down with the hose clamp to make sure everything's really tight. So this is, obviously we're gonna use more stuff than this, but this is kind of what you need to get started. We'll have a full kit in the description for this boat. If you have a Super 21V or anything similar, you can pick up this entire kit for your boat down below. If you have any questions, have a similar boat, we'd be happy to build a system for you. Just hit us up and uh, we can talk through what you're looking for, what kind of boat you have, and build something perfect for your boat. I'm gonna hand this off to Jake. He's gonna start drilling some through holes and getting this system installed. Check it out. Hey guys, I'm sitting in our 2005 Supra and today we are going to be measuring the custom ballast bags that we're gonna be putting in this boat. Uh, we're gonna be putting as much weight as possible and these rear lockers as well as the um, ski locker and the front bow. We'll be combining all of that front bow to one bag. It's gonna give us like an arrow shape. So we'll be walking you through that and all the steps it takes to take the measurements for it. These rear lockers should be pretty simple. Um, there's nothing really intruding on them and they're pretty square. So we'll get those measured out and then we'll get all these measurements sent over to fat sack and they'll make the bags for us and get them sent over all right so we're going to start off by getting some measurements of this rear section All right guys, we're gonna measure up our ski locker bag here. Our ski locker does continue on into the bow, so we're gonna try to do one continuous bag for this. Um, we might run into an issue, uh, so we'll make that decision here in just a minute, but we're gonna get some measurements. All right, so Jake put this sketch here together and it has all the dimensions for the rear bags and the ski locker bag and the bow bag that we need, including where the fill and vent ports should be. And we'll review these, make sure that the dimensions are correct, make sure that we have all the ports needed. And we'll go ahead and send these over to Fatsack. Uh, once Fatsack gets them, they'll create a 3D model and they'll send that over to us that looks like this with a, you know, you can see where the ports are, you can see the size of the bag, they'll let us know what the weights are to make sure that it fits in the system and setup that we want as far as the overall weight goes. And then we'll go ahead and get it approved and it takes about one to two weeks to get these customs bags made. So if you have a boat and you can't find a bag that you want or it doesn't fit, hit us up and we'll be happily, you know, if you can get us a sketch like this, we can happily build you a custom bag specifically for your boat. The cost is in line with, um, you know, the size of the bag that it would be if you bought a stock bag and it, you can get one that fits perfectly. We can uh, help you walk through any details that you might have and get you all set up. We're going to go to the next step now. I'll hand it off to Jake. Now that we have all of our old plumbing removed, we're able to move forward and that's going to be installing our through holes here. So these fittings... Ugh. When separated are three different pieces. We have our mushroom fitting that is going to go through the boat. We have our valve, which is going to be there in place in case anything were to ever go wrong and you need an emergency shutoff. And then we have our barbed fitting that is going to connect up to our hose. So what will happen first is we need to find a spot here in our engine bay that's going to allow uh, for us to install these through holes. And we have lots of space here on this left side. So in order to position our through hole fitting, what you're gonna do is take a magnet. The magnet's about this large, and uh, we have one on this side of the boat and then one on the bottom side of the boat. And I actually found my spot already, which is gonna be right here. You can see this magnet. 
on the ground here. And on the opposing side, I went under the boat uh, and just connected it. So they're neodymium, so they're extra strong, so they can go through the hull of the boat. And so now when I move this one up here to the position I want, it'll move the magnet on the opposite side of the boat. And then I'll be able to go underneath, trace it with a marker, and use our hole punch saw to cut it out. So as you can see, we have our old fitting here still. We're going to end up capping this one. It's uh, only half of an inch, whereas these are a full inch, so we're going to get a lot more flow through these and not be restricted at all. So the next step will be cutting or marking this hole, moving it to our next position, which I'm going to do up here next to the old fitting, mark another hole there, and then also go over to this side of the hull, and I have room over here for one more fitting. So then we'll have three in for the three spots we're going to be adding pumps, and we'll be able to get those all glued in. We do use 4200 Fast Cure. Uh, with these fittings. It takes about 24 hours to dry, so after we insert these, we will have to wait for them to dry before we can go ahead and move forward, but we can mount the pumps in the meantime. We just won't be able to connect up any hoses to them until it's done. Uh, for a majority of this, you can do it by yourself, but when you are putting these through the through hole, you will need someone there to hold the fitting in place while you screw the nut on. And so we're just going to go ahead and get to that step, and then I'll have someone come help me out. All right, now that we got our first uh, spot marked, we're going to go ahead. I shifted this magnet over here. As you can see, our fitting will fit right here above our old one, giving us enough room. There's the throttle cable here we'll have to look out for, but, I mean, that has movement. It's not going to be too big of an issue. So we're going to go ahead and get under the boat and mark that one again. Then we'll move over to this side of the engine bay and get our spot marked over there. And we'll go ahead and get drilled. All right, so that one's been marked. We're going to go ahead and move the magnet over to the opposite side. And we probably want to run it right about here, if possible. So I'm going to crawl back under the boat and as you can see we're now under the boat. We have our two spots that we traced out with our magnets under here. We're going to go ahead and get those drilled out now. What I will do first is mark the center hole with a sharpie marker, drill it out with a quarter inch bit to uh, start off. And then we will get our hole saw and drill out the rest. This center bit on this is quarter inches, so we're just going to get a pilot hole started and then go in with this. When we, do, when we do drill our holes, we want to make sure to start in reverse while we go through the gel coat. And then we'll put in forward once we're through the gel coat so that way we, can, uh, we don't crack anything along the way. I personally like to wear a respirator. During the process, that is up to you. I just don't like breathing in fiberglass dust. So we'll start by marking our center points. that all three holes have been drilled we're going to go ahead and install our through hole fittings what that's going to involve is taking these fittings and pulling them through the holes we drilled we will be then applying our fast cure 4200 around the lip of the fitting now this can be a little bit difficult to do by yourself if you don't have the correct tools, uh, I will show you how I'll be doing it. What I did is I took a piece of wire and attached it around a screwdriver. And the screwdriver basically is going to have the wire uh, attached to it. And it's going to pull up against the bottom of this so I can pull it up through our fitting with the wire going through the middle here. Once I get it pulled up through our uh, boat, I'm just going to screw on the nut a little bit and so that it can hang there in uh, the hole that it's supposed to be in. 
It will then go under the boat, fill in this lip here with 4200. Uh, and you want to make sure you can overfill it a little bit. Uh, so that way you get a nice good seal when you pull it up. So then I'll come back up here, pull the fitting tight to the boat, screw down my nut, and then these through hauls have two little uh, out dents basically. And the way I catch those is I just put a vice grip on a screwdriver that is the same width as this hole. So it catches on those parts that are a little bit wider and I set it to the exact length. So when I come in on top here, I can just hold it as I tighten it down. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'll videotape from the top here, but I'm just gonna go on the bottom, apply that coat of 4200. And you wanna do these one at a time because it takes about 15 minutes for that stuff to start to get tacky and then 24 hours for it to cure. So you don't want it just sitting out. So as you can see, I've got my wire that I ran here. It's gonna pull my through hole up just like that. And we will then slide our nut onto the wire just to get it started. So now that nut is started and I can drop it down that's going to um, allow the fitting to give me space to put the 4200 on. So I'm gonna go under the boat now and put that 4200 on. All right, our 4200 is now applied to that lip. We're gonna go ahead and pull this fitting up Slowly, I'm gonna get this nut screwed down further. All right, so that's pulled through. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that wire down. And what we'll do now is use our pipe wrench Long. With our tool that I was showing you. To get this tightened down. All right, so that's on there as tight as I can get it. Now we're gonna go under the boat, clean up the excess, and uh, do our next one in the same exact way. Now that all three through halls are installed, those have to cure for 24 hours. So as soon as those are finished, we'll come back, tighten down our pipe fittings, and then get the rest of the plumbing on. Now that we have our through halls installed, we're going to go ahead and put our valves on. Uh, these valves are pretty close together down here, so we're actually going to elbow off the one so that we can get it to fit. So to do that first, we're going to put some Teflon tape around this coupler. So we got both 
those fittings in now. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is put our valve over here. And put our hose barb here. And then we'll go ahead and over to our other side over here and get that installed. All right, so we're gonna get this fitting installed now. That's just gonna go right here. This does move out of the way. It's just in the way right now. All right, so now we can get our valve installed over here. We will install that hose or that fitting first before we go ahead and move forward with this. We went ahead and got this one threaded on now as well. Um, we'll move over to this through hole over here, get that one threaded on, and then we'll get our pumps mounted after that. We're gonna go ahead and get this pump mounted uh, right here. So that way we can get our plumbing started now that we have all of our through holes finished. So it's just gonna be simply bolting this pump through the seat and uh, then running our pipes after that. So we'll start by finding the location we want, which I wanna go right here. And then I've actually got a marker to, it's not tall enough to get to the hole, so I'm using a screwdriver and I'm just putting ink on the tip of the screwdriver. Typically we would uh, just drill screws into wherever we're mounting these, but for this instance, we are going to be using bolts. So now that I got those spots marked, I'm just gonna go ahead and drill those out. All right, so now we can put our screws through with the washers on the other side. So we now got that pump mounted and we can go ahead do the exact same thing on the other side and then we're gonna be mounting our third pump up in the locker and then we'll go ahead and get all the tubing run now that we have our two rear pumps mounted we're gonna mount our third uh, pump it's gonna fill our front two ballast bags here we're just gonna mount it on there's a wall directly below here that I'm just gonna mount it to I'll show you a close-up of it after I'm done uh, just going to take four screws though and mount it similar to the way we did it in the rear. All right, now that we have that mounted, uh, we have our hose already run up here. All we have to do is hook that hose up to the fill side of the pump and then lay our bag down and run the vent hose up to the front and then drill the through hole for the vent in the front as well. All right, so for the pump back here, we'll run our fill hose and I actually just poked it up through the hole here. It's gonna come from where this other vent hose was running. It's gonna go straight to our pump right here. Um, it'll go in like that. And then we will actually be using the three quarter vent hose that's already here. Um, so that we don't have to put in bigger through hauls on the outside of the boat. For the vent, it doesn't matter. It's not filling it. So it doesn't like restrict the space at all. 
we will just have to put a check valve in in the hose line and then we'll run this hose down through this wall into this compartment into our through haul uh, valve over here so I'll show you where that's gonna come through and how we're gonna get that hooked up all right so now that we have our fill hose and everything hooked up to these pumps we're gonna go ahead and hook up the fill hose that goes to the bag as well as utilizing the vent hoses that are already in there so we'll just hook one side up here run to the back and hook up a quick connect and then we will cut these back put a Y in there so we can put it down to one hose. We'll put on a chunk of three quarter here since that's what it was before for the vent hose and run a check valve in there as well. All right, so this rear locker bag is all wrapped up. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side and then we will be done with the plumbing back here. We have all three pumps mounted. We're gonna go ahead and work on some of the wiring for this. We're gonna use the same exact panel they had here prior. Uh, since it's got our front left and right, we're just gonna remove this. We have three bags of these uh, wiring kits. It's gonna have a wire that will run back to our pumps as well as a wire that will run to our fuse block that will be on the battery and then the switch as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and install the switches first. So we've got those old switch panel or switch block here. I'm just gonna unplug it. So as you can see, we've got those three fat sack switches installed on that panel now. Uh, when we're ready to finish this all up, we'll tuck these all in here and put this panel back on like normal and put those screws back. But first we gotta run all of our wires. So we will do that next. Next, we'll be running this uh, wire back to the two pumps we have there and then the one in the ski locker. These two all run together just on top of the speaker panel here. Get them zip tied up and run back to the pumps. Uh, pretty simple, not much to it. And then I'll run them up to the switch panel that's up here. So we have all those wires run and plugged into where they need to go. We'll pull the extra slack through. And then at the end, we'll zip tie all of these up. But currently we're just gonna let them be in case we have to change anything along the way. Now that we have our wires run to our pumps, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and run our other wires that are gonna be going to our battery terminals. We don't have our batteries installed yet since we're doing a uh, upgrade kit for it to add another battery and add some switches to the batteries. Uh, so we'll just run them to where they're gonna go and then they'll also meet up here at the switch panel. All right, so we got those three pulled out there. They run underneath our driver's side here and they'll get zip tied up there when we wrap everything up. And then they run over into our 
uh, spotter seat section over here where the battery is going to be. We'll have to terminate those ends to get them on our fuse block, but for now we're just going to tuck them back and make sure they're uh, out of the way. So we need to add a through haul to the front of our boat here. And in order to do that, we just have to drill a hole, a uh, pilot hole, and then use our hole saw to get the rest of it out. It needs to be about an inch and a half so we can fit this through hole through. And we'll hook up the vent hose for the belly and the front bag to this then. That way it all flows as one and uh, comes out pretty evenly. I'm gonna go right about here. I already looked on the inside of my boat to make sure I'm gonna have room for it. And this looks like it'll be the perfect spot. So remember anytime you're drilling through the gel coat to start in reverse, so that way you don't chip it. And then you can go ahead and go forward after that. All right, so we've got our pilot hole drilled. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the hole saw to get the rest of that out. As you can see, we've drilled through both layers of the fiberglass there. And now we'll have plenty of room to fit our through hole. And we'll be able to vent it out the side there then. What we'll go ahead and do next is clean up this area, add some silicone to this edge to give it a seal. So any waves splashing over won't uh, get in the boat. And then we'll tighten the nut from the other side. Now that we've got that hole cleaned up, we're just gonna go ahead and add a bead of silicone to the edge of this uh, through hole. Now I'm gonna push it through. I'll go on the inside of the boat and tighten that nut down. Uh, just against the thread, so it pulls it tight against the boat. You won't be able to see that. It's too tight of a space, but it's just as simple as taking this and spinning it. And then you can put a screwdriver. What I typically do is put a screwdriver between these two notches and screw the nut down as tight as I can. As you can see, that silicone oozes on the outside there. That's okay. Uh, we'll get that cleaned up. Once it starts to dry, it's easier to cut off once it's got solid a little bit. So we'll just press that up against there. And now I'm gonna go on the inside of the boat and tighten this down. All right, Jake just got all the plumbing done on this boat. The ballast bags are installed. So we, in we removed the existing bags in this boat and we installed a 600 pound bag on each side of the, uh, in the rear lockers. There's an 835 pound massive ski locker bag. And then we're piggybacking that to a bow bag that's 235 pounds. So the overall weight in this boat now is 2,350 pounds, which stock was around 700. So it's an extremely large increase in weight overall. Um, boat still will run great. We're gonna have to swap out and upgrade the prop to a lower uh, gearing prop to ensure that we get the torque we need out of the hole. We'll probably lose two or three miles an hour at the top. Um, but overall, that's not how we're using the boat anyways. We're not ripping across the lake at 45, so shouldn't cause any problems for us at all. Um, <clears throat> so we got the perfect dialed in set up for surfing. I'll go ahead and walk you guys through how we plumbed it, show you guys the bags installed in the lockers, and just walk you through that process, and then we'll get on to the next step. All right, we're back here on the port side rear locker. You can see our pump mounted right there. The same exact thing is going on on the starboard side, same position of the pumps and everything. The hose is running through the panel there in near the V-drive where we drilled the through hulls. And that's the Johnson reversible pump. Uh, you can see the one inch line running up here and it runs to the, the back of the bag. We always wanna run the fill hose to the back of the bag and that will ensure that it drains well because obviously when we're fully ballasted, the boat's gonna kind of sit bow high a little bit. So the water's gonna be towards the back. So we wanna drain it from the bottom 
Filling it doesn't matter a whole lot, but we want to make sure we run the fill and drain to the back to ensure it operates well. And you can see our vent hose here. This is a three quarter inch line tied to the three quarter inch through hull so that we didn't have to change out the through hulls and try to redrill those and pull them off. The pressure of this system isn't gonna cause any issues to the bag with a three quarter inch vent and a one inch fill. So we're good to go there. So again, this is a 600 pound fat sack designed for this exact space in this locker. We'll have our kit in the description below. So if you can pick this kit up, if you have a similar boat and we have 600 pounds on the port, 600 pounds on the starboard and a pump mounted in each of these lockers. Now we'll go show you the ski locker bag and the bow bag. All right, we're in the ski locker here and you can see this is just an overall, it's a massive ski locker. This is an 835 pound bag. You can see it's a little wet. We did go out and lake test this to make sure we didn't have any leaks, make sure everything worked properly and all of that. There is a, the pump for these, this bag and the bow bag is in the rear ski locker. I'll show you here in a second. So we ran the through hull and then ran the plumbing up to the ski locker here to fill these two bags, which are hooked up in series and then vent out of one hole. All right, so I'm sure you saw Jake install this pump, but this pump is installed in the rear of the ski locker on this uh, plastic divider panel here. It's mounted vertically. We always wanna mount these pumps with the brass head down. That way, if this head does ever leak, it doesn't ruin the motor. So we mounted a brass head down this is our fill line that's going to the through hull. And then we have our fill to this bag right here that will fill and drain this bag. And then I'll show you guys how we plumbed in the bow bag as well. All right, so as you can see here, here's the tip of our ski locker bag. And then we have a port that goes off the front of that and goes right into the bow bag here near the center of the overall bag. And then you can see our vent line here our vent line runs from here and it loops up into the front of the bow and then it goes back near the driver for the th vent. The reason we loop it through the bow to make sure that uh, it doesn't drain underway. If you were to run from here and then kind of along here right to the back, there's a chance that underway it's going to suck some water through there and vent out the back because it's lower. So we always want to make sure we plumb this the, up the bow and then out the back. And that ensures that it won't drain. So this bow bag is 235 pounds, connected to our 835 pound ski locker to give this boat the perfect balance with the rear ballast as well. So as you saw Jake work on this, we actually pulled all of the existing stock wiring out and went with the fat sack wire harness kits as well that include these fat sack switches. So we have the left, front, and right just like the factory in the same exact placement, but we did go ahead and replace everything with the new wire harness kits hooked up directly to the batteries. Um, this ensures that it's just a cleaner install. We don't have to try to track stuff down with the sprinkler valves and try to figure out what's what. It's a little bit easier install just to pop the switches out, swap these new ones in, get everything plugged in and ready to go. So that wraps up overall the ballast system in this boat. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to hit up our next episodes as we keep moving through this Supra.